everyone uh, my name is nirmalendu paul today i'm going to talk about how to create hair for games so i'm um, currently i'm working as a lead character artist in bandai namco singapore studio if you are not familiar with my work please visit my art station page uh, i have uploaded my professional and personal artworks over there so uh, let's say this is the character that i have worked and we are going to talk about this character and uh, how have i worked uh, on her hair and uh, the artwork and everything so basically this is the character right now in uh, marvel city tool back 3 and marvel city tool back 3 is a wonderful powerful uh, engine to preview your uh, character uh, with applied with all the materials and textures on on it so uh, basically i will talk about the whole pipeline which i uh, generally follow in my uh, day to day uh, work process so i have used uh, 3ds max photoshop uh, substance painter obviously gbrush for uh, r8 and finally i have rendered the character in monosy toolback 3 so i hope it help it, it you find it helpful so let's start so uh, basically i when i decide the character that what kind of look it should have and what kind of hair it should have i basically start with the uh, small thumbnails which are quick thumbnails like that in photoshop and i i do try to sketch it out uh, very roughly and it gives a gives me a uh, some kind of guide that uh, that where i'm going to bring my uh, fiber mesh uh, fiber mesh uh, the hair so excuse me so the first thing what i did is that i brought that uh, 2d sketch guide into gbrush and i tried to project it on on a plane and i started with uh, another plane and mask it and applied the fiber mesh on top of that uh, during this process i did two things one is to uh, to change the material of the fiber mesh so basically i try to use hair to uh, the material which is really nice and try to tweak the the main key light or the direct light over there and uh, i try to render uh, back and forth again and again to check it out that how it should look uh, my fiber mesh uh, on a final render so uh, basically what i did is that i started with a small chunk of uh, fiber mesh and uh, try to use a couple of brush on top of my uh, 2d sketch in the background as a guide uh, i heavily used uh, move to groom brush groom strong uh, and transform to so these are the these are the uh, tools that i've used throughout the whole process and uh, the main thing is that uh, i try to make some little bit difference a uh, different uh, uh, hair cards so uh, as you can see that uh, in in the guide uh, to this sketch i have tried to give a little bit uh, different kind of uh, hair cards so basically it gives a uh, uh, different kind of feel to the character uh so once i'm happy with the with the one part of that uh the sketch with the fiber mesh then i jump to the another part uh of of the sketch and try to try to follow the exact uh as much as i can be close to the to the concept sketch or or the guide guide sketch in the background so the process is same uh i try to copy paste uh the single fiber mesh again and again try to try to duplicate the uh, fiber mesh and uh, try to check it from the, from the different angles from the top from the left from the right back and forth and try to rotate it move it 
and uh, change it in a different directions so uh, also one more thing that i i try to uh, try to uh, maintain while I work on, on fiber mesh is that the projection of the light on top of the fiber mesh when I render it uh, that's a very crucial thing so according to the light I need to adjust the curvature of, of the fiber mesh so here I have tried to you know, to follow the same thing um, I'm done with the second one and then come up with the third one here um, again uh, duplicating that small clump of uh, fiber mesh and, and moving it, pushing it and rotating it and uh, with the move tool. So, uh, so this is the basic process and uh, I, I find it really, really helpful uh, and it gives me a lot of uh, freedom to to think that how it should look like again as i as i mentioned is that uh, you while i work uh, with the fire mesh i try to check it from the from the different view and perspective uh, though uh, we are uh, i'm going to uh, render it from one view which is a front view but still uh, it also heavily depends on that uh, how and uh, in which direction the light is bouncing on top of the fire mesh uh, so it's very very important that uh, to check uh, my structure over there uh, that how it should react with the light and uh, it gives a nice feel of the natural uh, hair so the hair to marble uh, material is really nice and it's it renders really really uh, good uh, so it's nice so one more thing is that uh, I try to uh, render uh, every back now and then to see that how it looks uh, in a final render and then I tweak it and modify it so once I'm happy uh, with with the shape of the fiber main of the part of the clump then I try to smooth it out and check it out and tweak it more so yeah. result once I'm happy with the result uh, of of the rendered image I bring it in in uh, Photoshop over there and in in gibberish i can render a uh, different kind of passes which is a mask which is uh, uh, z depth and the color map so here i have uh, brought that rendered texture which is a 2k map and uh, on a later stage you can see that there are like one two and three uh, and four five six is six uh, here are different which is not included in the in the video the earlier video I'm sorry about that uh, uh, after rendering this six different hair uh, clumps I thought that uh, this I will be needing more different kind of very uh, variations into that so what I did is I took the uh, took the previous uh, fiber mesh and uh, and I duplicated it and then uh, use the new uh, transform tool in GBrush 4R8 uh, and I rotate it and uh, then I skew it and then bend it so these are the modifier that I have used to create uh, those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, 6 other small uh, hair clumps and then uh, in Photoshop, I have the liberty uh, to to change a lot of things because Gibberish renders the mask, uh, which is a really, really helpful. Uh, I can use the mask here, and uh, I put a group, and in that group, I put all the uh, maps rendered images, and then I apply the mask. Uh, after that, I can change the background of the mask 
so you can see here that it's a completely transparent so after that I can change the uh, background as per my requirement uh, so if there is any any gap between those small uh, threads uh, the background color will support it and, and it gives a nice uh, effect to the to the texture so after this I try to use a different uh, filters like curves uh, then also some colors in, in the tip you can see that there's a pink uh, color uh, on the tip of that here and blue on in uh, in the root so uh, you can you can give a lot of different kind of color variations to the to the texture and you can use it in your model uh, I find it really nice but at the at this point uh, I thought not to go with this color variation uh, because I can check it out in in the engine and then I can come back and uh, I can change the color balance and, and values so after what I can use it uh, once I'm happy with with the with the curves brightness brightness contrast uh, I try to copy the whole level the whole image with a pressing ctrl shift c uh, which is copy via layer and it copies the whole chunk of layers and paste it on top of that so i came up with this one and i thought to to colorize it uh, i used color balance and then i tweak the value over there and this is the final result that i found it for the for the albedo or the color map and I'm happy with that uh, by the time I need to go back and forth to check it out and in my mouse tool bag that how it should look like uh, the next process was to create normal map the gloss map and the specular map so I used X normal uh, for that in the color map to convert it into into uh, normal map uh, then there is a, a trick that I do I go to the channel and then I, co I copied the red channel which is I can consider it as a most pro the probable uh, gloss map uh, because I can take the channel and paste it over here uh, sorry it's not gloss map excuse me it's a specular map so uh, in specular, specular uh, slot I can just plug into there and then I can just tweak the value and go back and forth to check in the in the Marmoset tool bag and how it should look like because Marmoset tool bag's specularity specular value is a little bit um, tricky so I find it a little bit tricky so uh, I need to go back and forth again and again to check it out that how the value is working how the the specularity is working so for the gloss map I took the specular map and just duplicated the layer on top of that and I invert it by pressing ctrl I uh, which is a shortcut key for the invert and uh, I got the gloss map so here is the value uh, the gloss map so I got all the four maps out of this render which is one which is the final color map then this is the gloss map and then the specular map and obviously the normal map so let me show you the normal map once again uh, here is the normal map so four maps already we got it and we are good to go with texturing the hair in in marmoset with different values so now we are in in marmoset and i have imported my model uh, inside my model site here uh, you can see that uh, uh, there are a lot of hair cards so basically what I do uh, generally in my process is that I try to create different kind of hair cards channels like uh, a big a long hair card uh, group then a shorter hair card group then a thinner one so in that way I try to uh, create different kind of uh, hair uh, meshes 
uh, and it gives me a good good uh, control over over the hair guard so also uh, it helps me to create different material for the hair as per their their uh, characteristics so here i have uh, i'm just applying all the different materials that i have created for the different part of the character uh, for the eye inner inner eyeball and the lens and then the uh, eyebrows uh, one more thing is that for the eyebrows i i couldn't get that much of time to work on on the uh, hair card so i used uh, fiber mesh for the for the eyebrows uh, but for the eyelash i have used the same thing that the hair cut obviously uh, because i was a little bit uh, uh, lazy with the with the hair uh, with the hair cut for the eyebrows uh, i spent quite a little bit time with the skin texturing uh, and i was really enjoying and then uh, it took me it cost me a little bit time so i couldn't manage the time for here at that time anyways moving on so uh, the hair card uh, i have applied the material for hair card uh, and it is good practice i find it very 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 helpful uh, while you work in engine that the naming convention is very very important because naming convention uh, of the mesh and then the naming convention of the texture map and naming convention for for the material if they are same and it helps a lot and it can save a lot of a lot of time and uh, you can avoid a lot of lot of problems so i try to maintain the the mesh name and the material name and the texture name almost same as much as i can so because in mamu said that this is the character that we just want to preview that how it should look like uh, so i was not too particular about the naming convention but yeah somehow the naming convention was close to the material and the mesh so it was easy for me to assign all those materials over there so once i'm done with the, applying the material i uh, put all the lights around that and i try to check it out that how it looks and uh, it looks really nice right now at the moment i'm quite happy with the with the result wow. so yeah now next thing what i did is that i try to check or tweak the value uh, the of the fresno of for the hair uh, if you want to get it's a really nice uh, feature so if you want to get little different kind of uh, specularity on your hair you can change the color in your material and then or shader uh, in your shader and then you can get a different kind of variations of hair and it's really nice and uh, you can you can try to check it out that how uh, it matches with the art direction of your character or the environment so you can you can play with the color value and the 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 actual value of that particular part and uh, it 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 gives really nice nice effect to your character so it depends again it depends as i told you it depends on the art direction of your uh, of your game and uh, your character and also uh, the target console or the target uh, device that you're working for uh, because sometimes it is a little bit costly for mobile platform so if you're working for uh, ps3 or xbox then you can maybe you can you can uh, go with this uh, but for mobile game, I have hardly used in my pipeline uh, this effect. So the next thing is that I wanted to check it out that how uh, the texture reacts in different environment or GI. 
so uh, I try to change different kind of uh, uh, skylight because skylight is very very important for PVR texturing system and uh, it gives it it plays a very important role uh, so I try to change the uh, different sky uh, environment the images uh, to check it out that how it looks so sometimes it gives a really nice effect and you find it like wow that's good I can keep it for my final render of the beauty shot so it's really nice uh, also one more thing that uh, I have uh, put it over here is a little bit bloom not too much uh, very little amount of bloom and there is also uh, uh, some vignette is there because it's a beauty shot that you want to put it into your portfolio so if you are making it for your portfolio so make it uh, really presentable so that your product can be uh, you can sell your product that is most important thing and that sh should be the bottom line so yeah so that is the, my final output of uh, this tutorial of the character uh, at the moment I hope the whole process that I follow in my daily uh, work pipeline uh, which I have uh, talked about right now would you find it helpful for you and uh, if you like the whole tutorial uh, please give, give a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below that if you want to have a different kind of more uh, tutorial so I will give my best and try to make that those tutorials in my future videos and I hope that uh, uh, it would be helpful so let's enjoy and uh, let's enjoy the art because it's awesome thank you so much for your time